Hello, City Skylines fans. I'm Socks Way Up, and welcome back to Lake Sockside. If this is your first time here, check out the description for a link to the playlist below so you can check the first episode and get caught up on what we're building here and kind of why we transitioned into this new city that we're building. Before we get into today's episode, I wanted to recap episode one for you guys. We got this commercial buildings that we've started, a couple commercial complexes, got them detailed up. Really, we wanted to establish the style of the city that we were going to build for this entire series. Really not a lot to pull from inspiration wise, except for just life experiences. And I'm building what I think is pretty, what I think goes good with the terrain that was given to us on this map that we chose. And here's our focus for today is going to be this new first residential district that we're building. Haven't really given the residential district a name. I kind of wanted to do that. We didn't do that yet. Here's the street layout. Let's jump right into it. We're using the big suburb assets to, to place down the buildings. We're, we're plopping pretty much every single asset in this series. I know some people don't like this style of playing. I absolutely fell in love with it not too long ago after I discovered you know, the customization, the amount of detail that you can really put into it and get your own look and feel of a city and not have to rely on city skylines to plop down the buildings that you want when you do the zoning. I did condense this time lapse down to just show a little sample of how we're placing down these buildings in this residential area. I didn't want to have a long 10 minute time lapse of me placing down every little building, but wanted to give a nice sample. And then we transition into the detailing phase. The landscaping phase is what we're calling it kind of. Um, but yeah, this gives us an idea of what we're going with for this district, for this area, for this first residential build in Lake Sockside. So these big suburb assets do a great job of adding foliage and trees to these houses. And so you don't have to do too much detailing because it kind of comes with it for you. But we added in a lot of our trees that we're mixing in with our city. Instead of using the actual forest brush that we created, I had to use, you know, customize these ones and place them down one by one to fit into these small areas and crevices that were left over where we couldn't place down houses. I think it turns out pretty. I like the way that the colors pop. It's not just green greenery as we've done in other cities where we've added little bushes or or flowers here and there, but I, I really dig it. I guess we have a fall theme going. It's looking good. And here we hit play finally. I wasn't sure how soon we were going to do that, but we I decided I wanted to see some some movement in the city as I was building. I think it helps. But this first residence finally moving in, getting the city going, getting the city growing. And I also wanted to make sure we have a single entrance into this neighborhood. I wanted to make sure once we populated it that it wasn't going to be a problem for traffic. I think it works okay. There's only going to be around 1,200 people in this area. As we build out the rest of the town, we're definitely going to be okay, I think. You can see a lot of people coming in initially, causing a little bit of traffic, but there was no backup, so I think that area will be fine. It's time for my favorite segment of the episodes, Landscaping with Socks. In today's installment, we build a custom park for the residents of Lake Sockside. So when I was designing this neighborhood, I knew I built this area that wasn't going to be able to be zoned with houses. And it instantly was like thought of, you know, this would be a great place for a little park for, for people to come in and play, take their kids to get away from the house a little bit and not have to leave the neighborhood. I think this little section turns out pretty sweet for that. Um, and yeah, it's something that we kept. I kept in mind as I was doing the road layout. I saw that large gap. I knew that the the big suburb assets need four. The depth is four on all of them. So some areas we made a bigger gap to leave, you know, the detailing areas behind it. It turns out really cool. I love the fact that we're doing this. And we had a little bit of trees in here as we get going because we weren't 100% sure what we were going to do yet. But that definitely leads into the creative process that I'm going with is kind of not completely planning. I knew I wanted to build somewhat of a park here. Didn't completely plan it and just enjoyed the process of building in city skylines. And so here you see we start grabbing some sandboxes and some toys. This first little phase of this, we just lay down a lot of the the different playground assets that we're going to use. And I did want to show this in like real time to show how slow and thoughtful I'm being. 
And then we speed it up again to be more of a time lapse, but here we find some decals, and the thought process here was this area is a little more run down, it's worn out, so we use the ruined style or theme in this area. And I used the decal instead of trying to use the brush to change it because I felt like I could get it more precise. It turns out pretty sweet. We also try to add a little bit of dirt in here. The decals kind of, um, I guess, collide with each other so the dirt doesn't completely come through. It comes through a little bit, as you see here, but once we cover it up, it I don't know. It definitely gives the look I was going for. This place has been walked on. There's kids playing on it constantly. And so we went with that. We went with just the ruined one. I took a peek at the grass to see, maybe I want that, but no. Then we, we settle for, for the ruined decal here. Kids love swings. That's one thing I know as being a parent, kids love swings. So we laid down some swings. We also have some of the tire swings as well. Again, we're just getting some of the props laid down here and then we start organizing them and placing them down where we need them. Also, parents need somewhere to sit while they're watching their kids at the playground. So we added some benches here and we transition into speeding it up again. So these are technically benches where people could sit and they also have a nice area to put trees in the middle of them. I thought that was a good way to break the different sections of the park apart. So we, again, we get enough of our, our assets down that we know that we're gonna play with. And then we start organizing them exactly how we want them long-term. Here we start placing trees into those benches. We go with the Linden Fall tree. Um, first we use the large one, then we go down to the smaller, the smaller version of that bright yellow. I just love the way it looks. Uh, it fits this area great in my opinion. We do miss one there, but we come back and fix that later. And then we're organizing some trees a little bit better now that we know we know these sections. And then we're going to start moving things around. First, we're going to get all the seating areas for the parents. So we line up those props a little bit better, duplicate them, kind of just place them around the park area and get some more happy parents so they can have some place to relax, maybe read a book while their kids are over there playing on the swings. And I was hoping there's monkey bars. I guess maybe I need to find some monkey bars in the workshop. But that's what's missing in here. But yep, just start laying down the playground, moving some sandboxes around, getting some areas for those kiddos to play. And then we start adding in these swing sets exactly where we want them long term. I really think those circular benches make for a good division between the different sections of the playground where the kids get to play and congregate and hang out while their you know, parents are relaxing. And the last thing we do here is we add a little grill area for the parents to maybe cook some barbecue while they're waiting and hanging out with the kids. All right, in this section, we're adding in a nice path around the neighborhood for the residents to go on a nice stroll. Maybe they want to enjoy walking right around that river area. You know, we do have this beautiful river, this beautiful lead into the lake that I thought was just perfect to have a path and some pedestrians to be able to just enjoy, have a nice stroll. Maybe they wind down the end of their evening that way. And then we just detail it up, we landscape it up, we add some trees around it and, and just make it kind of gorgeous and a nice peaceful walk. Maybe there's some people that, you know, run this path at night and get some energy out, some good exercise. And I just, honestly, I wasn't 100% sure what to do with this area with that river. And I feel like this was worked out perfect and it completes the area in my opinion.
All right, let's jump into a live play and check out this new neighborhood that we've added. Here's a nice little entrance, a little drive into the district, into the residential area. It looks like a kidney. Kind of, I didn't realize that was the shape that we went with. But yeah, so this this area turned out pretty sweet. I'm enjoying it. It's uh, it kind of outlines the river and I let the terrain kind of dictate the way we did the road layout. There's that small area there that I didn't really know what to do. I do like the way all these colors are just popping. I left the terrain alone. Usually I flatten areas. I decided to leave the terrain. You can see there's this little hill here where you drive up into the neighborhood. Looking pretty. I, I, I dig it. This area over here, the playground, I love the way it pops to the eye with the ruined decals that we use. We added the little event blocks to, to have people actually in there to show some people and some traffic. Um, I wish it generated a little more a little more traffic maybe we could add add some more oh those trees are they're they're not right let's go ahead and fix those live uh we'll uh go ahead and change move it here to just select trees grab that one just move it on over oh why how many trees do we have here one two three i have some issues with my mouse sometimes when i click it it actually places down more than one asset and i don't catch it so we got that lined up. Let's get this one lined up. And it's more here, it disappeared. Ah, we don't have prop and tree anarchy on right now. Let's try to get a hold of this one. Let's move it out of the way so we can get it to appear. Or we can just copy this one over. Let's go ahead and enable pop tree anarchy. Place that one down, get that one going. That one's not too bad. This one looking pretty good too. But yeah, some live play and some live editing there for you. But yeah, this playground turned out great. I love it. Maybe we'll add a little more um, of the events blocks in there to get more people. But yeah, this path turned out really sweet. I think people would love that. I, I want to live here. I want to live in this area. Some of the plans moving forward, you can see we started building out a road for the next district that we're going to make. And we're going to fill in the area here with some housing. Kind of lead all the way out here. And then right here, we'll do some commercial on the other side of the freeway is definitely going to be our industry area what we're going to start out there maybe blend in with some commercial as well and another freeway exit um but that pretty much sums up this episode it's a little bit shorter than some other ones not really sure what we're going to do lengthwise on all of these let me know what you think about the length is it too short is it too long i don't know we're trying to find a sweet spot and not over show too many redundant time lapses and i think we nailed it with this one personally so thanks for joining thanks for hanging out lake sock sides coming along nice we're taking it nice and slow keeping the momentum keeping the inspiration going i'm enjoying it i'm loving the look of it i honestly i, I play in this mode a lot and i just kind of look around and admire my work I'm, I'm digging it i'm not sure what to do with that area that'll be interesting but I wanted to leave you with a nice night view of Lake Sockside. It was looking pretty. I've been playing around with different lighting features and adding in those as well, which is a first for me. Usually I just go with vanilla things for that, but yeah, it's turning out nice. I'm enjoying it. Also wanted to do a nice time lapse of uh, sunrise here and kind of show the way the shadows and all those change. But let's leave with a secret word. The secret word we're going to go with today is enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I had a blast making it. And I'll catch you on the next episode of Lake Sockside. <laughs>